Cole has been training for 18 years, putting it all together here, racing at home on the Savage River, and he is faster by seven seconds than his extraordinary first run time. This may be the finest whitewater run in history. So this is Casey Eichfeld here, getting the opportunity to commentate on John Lugbo's infamous run from the 1989 World Championships on the Savage River. Competitor, John Lugbill. He has already won the gold medal with his first run time, and yet he does not know it. He is such an incredible athlete, and, and having the opportunity to uh, to watch this video and get to talk to you guys about it is, is, is great. The sport has changed a lot over the years. Uh, initially, boats used to look like gigantic cigars. And uh, so very difficult to maneuver through the whitewater. By this point at the 89 Worlds, boats are actually very flat. They've got very low volume and they're very pointy on the ends. He's rifling through the gate. 12 seconds faster than anyone else in the first run and yet he was disappointed. Said he was slow. Here's John Lugdale just showing us exactly how you can use these new flatter boats. Using the ends, using that low volume to actually do pivots and make turns very tight and very fast. You know, look at, you can see here, he's got incredible power, strokes really long, but still a high stroke rate as well. Here's an example of him using the stern, you know, waves, he's just busting right through them, you know, he's just continuing to powerhouse through everything. You know, this is a long stretch. One of the big differences between then and now is uh, race courses were a lot longer. I mean, this is a four minute long race run here, whereas now, we're only maybe 90 seconds to 120. This is an incredible move right here. Using the spin and serving across on the hole, this is just an incredible move that, you know, it was, it was inspirational and, and, and just taking slalom to a new level. And here it is, to the, the sprint to the finish, still just powering away. I mean, the amount of training that he must have done to be able to continue holding that kind of pace through a, a three and a half minute long course is just unbelievable. I think that uh, many of us strive to be the athlete that he and many others of that time uh, were. Unbelievable. Power and precision combined to give John Ludbill the gold medal. The duel on the Savage is over. The friendship between Davy Hearn and John Ludbill, the gold and silver medalist, as strong as ever.